hello um today i am videoing from home it's rainy and icky out and i didn't want to go out there and i have a very different kind of uh thing i'd like to share with you today you know the title of this is how i spent my corona confinement and and I'd like you to, to ask yourself how you're spending yours. One of the things that um, ha occurred to me over the past few days is that I was feeling um, just kind of like, yeah, something just not in place. And I realized what that thing that wasn't in place was, is that I was not doing some of the things I thought I would do during this time and we're already three weeks into it and just between you and me I have a feeling this may not last as long as we think it is it may come and go faster than we think I've just got that feeling that the things I want to do I better do now where did that feeling come from I'm thinking when I said that, I didn't mean something was going to happen. <laughs> I didn't do it now. What I meant was um, that it's going to uh, be over. And I'm going to be back to being real busy real soon and won't have time to do the things that I want. So, um, so as I thought about that, I thought, you know, I've got to get back to the things I want to do and I want to visit with you. But one of the things I realized I wasn't doing enough of was brooding remember we talked about that in a previous video a hen sits on her eggs as she broods she sits on them keeps them warm and gets them ready to be hatched likewise in our own lives when we meditate or ponder um, we are brooding so i have got something for you to brood about today in my, in my prayer and meditation, I've been thinking about this for a long time. Um, the first thing is about, you know, uh, our climate crisis. And then I thought about the coronavirus. Some people are saying, um, is God punishing us? Well, no. You know, they'll, they'll say God is punishing us for one thing or another. Um, and uh, one of the things is um, for our lifestyle or whatever thing people can come up with. And, and so I want to tell you right now, God is not punishing us. God is good and all good. And in unity, we teach we are not punished for our sins. We are punished by our sins. So it is the things that we do, the causes we send forth, that, that the effects of those is what our punishment is. But the punishment is really like a grade on an exam in school. You know, like, how are you doing? Are you getting what you need to do to grow? So I'm thinking about this and pondering. And I thought about, you know, if you ask yourself, what is the nature of the virus? Um, what are the effects? Well, one of the effects is a high fever because that is our body trying to attack the, uh, the germs, the bacteria, whatever has gotten into our system. That's, that's how we cleanse it. That's how we work. Our whole body functions together. So we're attacking this virus and what are the other effects? It is a respiratory uh, disease. And it's a dis-ease because you cannot breathe. And as I thought about that, I thought about our pollution problem. They talked about in India for the first time in memory, long-term memory, uh, the skies have not been blue. Well, the skies are blue. In Paris, there was uh, there was a haze a lot, you know, and it was it was getting foggy and polluted. The skies turned blue, and in um, Los Angeles, 
the smog was lifting. There's all these reasons why this could be working in some way as a part of a natural cause. And, and this is where I don't want to lose you. Please don't, please don't leave me on this <laughs> because I'm going to ask you to stretch your comfort zone and I'm going to ask you to stretch your mind. You know how we've been talking and talking about getting into higher consciousness? Well, I'm going to ask you to stretch your mind past our limited thoughts. What if, get ready, what if, this virus, like many other things that work, is working together to help the earth rid itself of a parasitic infection. And if it were a parasitic infection, how would that parasite be identified? Now, I know there's a movie called Parasite. We're not... I, don't, I haven't seen it, but I don't really plan to see it. But um, let's think about it for a minute. A parasite is an organism that lives on another organism and draws its life from that other organism. It, it sucks the life out of it. It gets its nutrients, but it gets its nutrients at the other's expense, you see? A parasite sucks the life out of something for itself. Then we've got the symbiote. The symbiote is an organism that, uh, there's two organisms that work together for the good of both. There's actually this, you might have seen it in pictures, these birds. And the birds live on the hippopotamus. And they pick bugs out of its nose. Well, I know that sounds gross, but, you know, a, a hippopotamus has no way to get the bugs out of his nose, and I'm sure they're annoying and probably unhealthy. So it's how things work together rather than the parasite, which is one sucking the life from the other. Symbiosis is the interaction between two different organisms to the benefit of both. I have thought for decades that we have been in a parasitic relationship with the planet, that we are polluting it, that we are destroying it. That, and when we do that, a parasite destroys its host. Are we destroying our host? Are we destroying our planet? And this is a way, I, I thought about the word, you know, if you have an infection, they've been talking about uh, some of the medications they give the people, um, uh, they call them antibodies. Well, we have bodies. Could this virus be a natural antibody to stop our, our pollution? We've got a chance right now. It's not over. We're not all gone yet. But we have an opportunity to pull back. And to say, what good is coming from what we're doing? It's a simple matter of cause and effect. We stopped everyday pollution, polluting, which stopped everyday pollution. See, we're here on the planet to learn. And the big question will be, have we learned anything when this is over? Have we learned we need to take care of the planet? It's not. Yeah, you have to understand, it's not a matter of, of fault. This is your fault. This is my fault. This is God's fault. This is the coronavirus fault. It is a matter of cause and effect. And what we want to do is we want to keep going back from the effect. I don't like this effect. What caused it? Oh, okay. So what was the effect that made that cause happen? So you go back, cause cause, cause, till you get to the root cause. Now, very often we don't get there because we get to a remedy. And if the remedy works, for example, we cure the coronavirus, we make it go away, there is no hope that if we don't change the way we're living that something worse 
will come out of it. When I say worse, we call that in unity the cosmic two by four. So the universe gives you a bonk on the, my mother used to give us a whack on the back of our shoulder. We were doing something, she said, cut that out. Well, you know, the universe gives us a whack on the back of our shoulder when we start doing something that is not helpful to the whole. And when we don't pay attention, if you don't pay attention to the two by four, you're going to get the cosmic four by eight. If you don't pay attention to the four by eight, you're going to get the eight by 16. Yeah, no, 32, eight by I, that measurement. But here's the thing. If we don't learn our lesson, we're going to get a bigger lesson. What if we were to look at the coronavirus rather than something inflicted on us as a teacher that has come to us to show us? You can't stop at the remedy. You got to stop at cause. So we, and, and I, as much as science looks at science, they're still looking at earth science. They're not looking beyond to metaphysical science. Metaphysical science is beyond our physical science. In unity, uh, we teach that there is a divine idea, a cause, an idea behind. And every single thing is here to help us learn. So can we learn from this by looking not just at, at the cause and effect, but at the cause behind it all? That's what's really important. In the book Talks on Truth, Charles Fillmore talks about microorganisms. Could we make microorganisms? Well, let's back way, way, way up and look. let's look at the planet. So the planet is there in front of us and we're like astronauts looking at it down there. And we see the pollution and we see the stuff. We are just a piece of this. We are just a piece of it. We are being a very harmful piece of it, but we are a piece of it. We are not focused on the fact that the earth is our, our uh, source of, of, of food and, and um, uh, fresh air, everything, everything that's good. But instead, we've turned away from taking care of them, having a symbiotic relationship with the planet to having a parasitical relationship with the planet. Hmm. So what are we going to do? What we are going to do is we have an opportunity now to ponder, as we've talked before, think about things, and realize, come to realize, to realize is to make real, that there is a cause beyond our visible, knowable science. We have to get to quantum physics to understand that this virus that came did not come out of nowhere. Everything has a purpose. Maybe the purpose of this virus was to wake us up to the fact that we need to change from having a parasitic relationship with our universe to having a symbiotic one. I was in sixth grade when I first heard about um, what is that? Companion planting, conservation and com companion planting. I can still see myself sitting at that desk and the teacher talking about crop rotation. Well, it, it's funny when you have, what moments do you have when that bell went off that said there's something here that, that the farmers have to make sure they, they rotate their crops to keep it. Well, somehow we, we stopped looking at that as the way it was, blessing the earth, letting the earth work, let the, let the plants grow with other plants that they work well with. I always remembered, plant your corns and pumpkins together because the, the, um, the vine of the pumpkin uh, strengthens actually the stock of corn. They do well together. They prevent bugs from each other. Marigolds in your garden prevents uh, bugs. There's so many things when you live with nature instead of as a symbiote rather than as a parasite. The more we started to drain our land and strain our land and, and look for it for the buck, look for it for the buck. The other thing, how often 
Have you heard about, I, I, I remember pictures that haunt me to this day, oranges being dumped. They were dumped on the beach and they were dumped there in order because they had a bumper crop and they wanted to um, keep the prices up. This is not uncommon. Uh, but maybe 20 years ago, I read about how uh, um, thousands of uh, calves were were killed um, to keep the price of beef up. It, it's just, it's insane. So, what a wonderful project to think about. Let's not call it a problem, let's call it a project. We want to use this time to brood, to, to hatch wonderful thoughts about how we can come out of this better learn from the virus, keep learning about the cause, the cause, the cause, go back till we get to sometimes the fact that, hello, we are the cause. But if we realize the cause and, and we're having an effect from a cause we sent forth, duh, all you have to know about is that you, you're a part of it in order to change it. Isn't that exciting? We can change this we so can. So, so I invite you to, to take time to, to think about it. Look back to the cause. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is a theory. A theory is something that is ours to prove. So what about thinking about that? What about seeing? Can you prove that? The earth is breathing. Things are happening every day that are wonderful. Let us ponder that. Let us brood on that. Let us hatch some great thoughts because nobody is unlimited. On that note, you have a great day and uh, think on this and may God bless you good. Stay home, wash your hands, stay safe and healthy. I'm thinking of you. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow.